Hi folks, welcome to my debut live stream. Uh, this is the first time I've ever done a live stream like this actually. A few presentations, few workshops, but uh, it's the first of a live stream. Uh, it's great to see so many folks tuning in. Awesome. Uh, this will be available. I know some of you are up really, really late or really, really early. I believe that this will be available within 24 hours or so. Just to reiterate, my name's Tom Hall, in case you didn't catch that up there in the YouTube link. I'm an audio-visual artist, and I'm also a content developer at Cycling74. And um, I'm really excited for this. So folks, a uh, couple of housekeeping uh, things to touch base on. Uh, right now, because of the way OBS works, I don't have uh, Max's menu bar up in the top. But uh, if I do go up there, I'll prompt you as to exactly what it is I'm up to. Uh, the other housekeeping thing is super excited. I've got good mate, Andrew Pask, old buddy, who's taught me a lot in Max MSP over the days. He's going to be kicking around in the comments because we're going to be patching along. I'm not going to... I'm going to try not to go too fast on you so you can keep up and follow what's going on, take notes and the likes. But if I don't catch a comment and I don't give you an answer, hopefully Andrew will be in there. Uh, so keep an eye out. There he is, Andrew Pask. I saw him just, hey, everyone. Uh, keep an eye out. Andrew uh, will help you out if I can't. So today we're going to take a look at MC and generative pattern making. And here's the, here's the patch we're going to kind of have a crack at. Now, MC is a new patching paradigm that was added to Max 8 for the release of Max 8, and it's an extension in some sense of existing MSP objects. And MC stands for multi channel. Now, it's not multi channel in the traditional sense where multi channel equals multi speaker. It essentially what we're doing is packing a whole bunch of MSP, which used to be like mono patch cables, into a singular patch cable. So, you know, we're not fanning as much. What I really like about MC is it allows you to do some like complex tasks, complex kind of like, you know, programming that would usually involve hundreds of objects. You can still do that in a much more simplified way. Uh, and the other great thing about MC is it kind of like uh, there's a whole messaging system that that is included as part of MC that allows you to, even though all those patch cables are, are packed into a single patch cable, you can still address all of those patch cables on a per channel basis. So without further ado, it's time to dig in. So let's get into it. So I'm just going to select all this and hit delete. Okay, so let's start up the top here. I'll zoom in a little bit. And uh, actually, just, just let's just make sure everyone can hear me okay. Can everyone hear me okay? Got to get a word there in the comments. Get a thumbs up. Just want to make sure. Presuming you can. Yes. Okay, let's let's kick off. So I'm going to start with a pretty straightforward uh, floating point number box. And to get that up in the patcher, make sure your patch is unlocked down here at the bottom. Now I'm going to go through some of this basic beginner stuff, uh, patching, patching protocol, like locking and unlocking the patch. Uh, later on, I'm, I'll, I'll skip over that. So let's just start off, unlock the patch and type, you can just go straight to this object by typing F on your keyboard for a floating point number box. Now underneath that, press N on the keyboard and we're going to type phaser. And we're going to give it a value of 2. So our initial frequency will be 2 hertz. 
what is 2 hertz? 2 hertz is 120 BPM. Uh, how, how do we know that? Well, there's a simple expert calculation I can do. I'll just show you this. I'm, I'm going to delete this after, but it might be handy for some of you. And so we've got 60 seconds in a minute. So $6,000 sign F. Oh. What am I doing here? Let's scrap that. <laughs> 2 hertz is 120 BPM. I'll get back to that calculation. Wow, I just blanked. Uh, so let's just see. We need to get uh, we need to get audio on. I, you're not going to be able to see this because of OBS, but we want to go up to options. So go to options up the top and click on audio status and that window has a few settings in it wow okay abs the other thing we can do to turn audio on is down here in the bottom corner just click this io on off box now I can tell you the audio status settings I have. I've got a sampling rate of 44100, an I.O. vector size of 256, and a signal vector size of 64. Now because we're doing an audio driven, yeah, completely blanked on that algorithm. Thanks, Pask. Um, <laughs> we have scheduler in overdrive turned on or toggled on. We have audio and interrupt turned on. Uh, this, because we're doing a timing based patch here with triggers and the likes, we want to, this, this will give us maximum accuracy. It also will get all of our patching into the audio thread, the audio timing thread. Okay, so providing that you've got your audio status window up and turned on and the default settings will be fine but you definitely want scheduler in overdrive toggled on and audio and interrupt toggled on and then toggle on the audio on off here we then want to go ahead and make a new object and type scope tilde and there we have our phaser uh, let's just take this scope and select it and then hit the eye over here the eye icon over here on the right side and we want to change the range from 0 to 1 since our phaser goes from 0 to 1 it just allows us to see the the phaser cycling through a little easier okay so the phaser is what's going to drive this patch from the beginning. So underneath that, we're going to make our first MC object. So just type N on the keyboard to make a new object and type MC.dupe. And then here's where we set how many channels there are. We don't actually need for this object to type an attribute. We just need to give it a number. So we're going to type eight because we want this to duplicate our phaser to give us eight copies of this of the phaser here and then underneath this object we're going to make another mc dot rate r-a-t-e now there's a few settings for mc rate there's a sync zero which is default where it's locked, it's locked to the phaser above here. But when you reset the phaser, it doesn't reset the MC rate. So what we want to do is when we reset our phaser, we want to reset our rate as well. So we're going to do a sync attribute. So after MC rate tilde space at sync one. Okay, 
And now if we duplicate, we can duplicate this scope just by selecting it and dragging it down. You'll see that we have the exact same phaser here. But you'll see that these dots here, if I lock the patch, so you can lock the patch down here, these dots here represent each of our eight channels. Right now, it's just eight copies of the phaser from the top here duplicated and they're all they're all in sync and on top of one another okay so let's just leave that for one little second and I want to show you what some of these unique messages that uh, are part of the MC patching domain that allow us to address these all of these and oh just one thing uh, up in the top corner uh, top menu bar there's a debug under debug you want to have event probe and signal probe ticked. These are these are off by default when you install Max for the first time. So you can actually hit Control Three or and and Control Four or um, Command Three, Command Four to turn those on. This allows us to kind of hover over the patch cables like this and see what's going on. And it looks like. OBS actually doesn't show that pop-up so that's pretty useless thanks OBS Wow uh, anyway we'll stick with the scope so we want those on let's take a look let's make another object here and it's just a straightforward MC sig so it's just a straightforward signal MC dot sig tilde one And that's just going to be, and then we want to give that an attribute after the one, another at. And this is where uh, there's a difference to mc.dupe. You actually have to set the channels with an attribute. So at chans eight. And now underneath the mc.sig, let's make a new object and we're going to make a jit.cell block. This is this sounds weird, right? Because we're doing audio and not jitter. But uh, let's join this up, and you'll see Cell Block does this cool thing with MC, where you can actually see the values of our eight signals. They're all set to one. Now these are the messages we're going to use for MC rate. But I just want to show them with MC Sig because I feel like it's a little easier to, to get a, gra a grip on them and see what's going on. So the first one is the classic deviate, and it does exactly what you think it would do. Um, if I type a dollar sign one, so make a message box. You press M on the keyboard above the MC Sig. And type deviate dollar sign one, and then after deviate dollar sign one, you can just hit one. Dollar sign is going to be our variable in this message to sig. So above this, I'm going to make a floating point number by pressing F on the keyboard, and then I'm going to join the floating point number into deviate. So it kind of looks like this. And then let's lock the patch. Now what this does is deviate gives us a random amount, which will be set by the floating point number around one. So if I go point one, it will give us a random value around one up to a maximum of point one around the number one. So it will go down, it has the possibility to go down as low as 0.9 and as high as 1.1 so that that's really good for randomizing it's good for uh, spatialization it's good for taking uh, MC and using those panning those channels randomly across uh, left and right channels for example the one th we're going to be using ones that are a little we have a little more control over here so let's go ahead and use increment So you can just double click on your message box and double click the deviate 
and type in increment and what this does is it increments up by the value that we input to the message box from 1 upwards so if I type in 0.1 you see we have 1, 1 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 we can switch this around so that this is 1 and dollar sign 1 and type 0.1 again and now it starts at 0 and as you can tell starts at sorry 0.1 the value we input and increments up by 1 throughout our 8 channels the one we're going to use for our MC rate is harmonic and we're going to probably set this to 2 since 2 is the value the core value of our phaser and then you know this is an amount that you can play with throughout your patch so 0 0.33, 0 0.25, 0 0.125 all of them will give you different values so let's go ahead and just delete this part and certainly uh, this kind of helped me way back get my head around all of these messages for MC a lot by just sitting there and looking at what the cell block was giving me when I put in different values I would definitely encourage checking that out later so watch, watch the scope down here I'm gonna put this over here I'm gonna connect this into the rate multiplier so I, sh I should elaborate on what MC rate does it's being driven by the phaser up here so everything is phase synced and you can think of MC rate like uh, clock divider or clock multiplier it's basically you have this ability to input a, a division or a multiplier into this top right inlet of your MC rate and then you can multiply that or divide across all of that with MC rate because we have eight channels coming in and coming out we can then harmonically set each of those rate phases by an amount so watch the scope here when I input 0.33 it goes nuts it's actually really pretty and you can see that they're all offset but they're all in sync still it's super cool um, I should reveal I don't know how this happened but I had this idea in the shower yep wasn't even experimenting max all right so here we go we want to use those they're super sharp super awesome uh, audio rate triggers there's so much potential here right so we need to get these out of here I should add also that whenever you want to set how many channels you have in your MC patch you only need to do it at any time at the top level so we set eight channels up here we don't need to set eight channels anymore there will always be eight channels as we go down or across so as as you know when you want to get the edge of a phaser you need to use delta we want to get the delta of this signal it's basically doing a um, uh, sample by sample analysis and we can just make an MC Delta object and then join a patch cord out of MC rate into MC Delta and then after MC Delta we want to make an MC dot greater than object and we're just going to type zero so we want to know each time these triggers hit or or leave hit or leave hit and leave actually we can a analyze both of those uh, when they leave zero we'll join that up here and then we have an object in max that is able to detect the edge and that's 
what you call mc.edge. And that doesn't need any attribute or or any kind of number. It's just straight up there. And now if we type uh, B, type B on the keyboard for a bang, we get a bang. And when you hover over, let's see if OBS doesn't show this. Oh, you don't even get pop-ups for uh, inlet and outlet notifications and, and help. Okay, I'm going to have to change that. Boo OBS. Uh, so there we're getting bangs uh, each time uh, a phaser leaves or, or returns to zero. What MC Edge is super cool because it gives us something, a little something extra than your normal MSP Edge. If I make a message box here by typing M on the keyboard and join a patch cord to the right inlet, the right inlet of the message box, it gives us a voice number which is, this is vital for this patch. We're able to get a voice number that matches a bang. Now I wanna make a quick little visualizer for this because it's, it's really useful I find to kind of see this stuff happening. And there's a couple of cool objects for this. So let's make a new object over here. And of course, there's an MC snapshot MC snapshot takes or snapshot or MC snapshot takes an audio signal and it reads the signal at a millisecond rate that you set. So we're going to set it to 50. It doesn't need to be super accurate. It's just a visualization of the signal. Join and patch cord into here. And we want to capture all of these signals from this scope. So there's actually a cool object called mc.makeList. Now I can tell you these objects are super cool. This MC snapshot out the bottom right outlet gives us a voice number and out the bottom left gives us the signal value of that, of that uh, channel. And then the MC make list needs three things. It needs the voice index. It needs the items assembled into a list in the middle inlet. And, make, and the first inlet to MC make list needs a trigger. So over here, let's make a new object and type T for trigger. T is short for trigger. B for a bang. And L for for a list. And then in here, let's join a patch cord out of the right outlet of snapshot into the trigger. Now we know that the middle inlet needs a list, so let's send that over. Let's send that to the right, the far right inlet of make list. To make list, getting tongue-tied here. To make list output its list, we need to trigger it. So we're going to join the patch cord to the first inlet to trigger a list output. And then our value for our voice goes into the middle inlet of make list. And now if I type M for message box here and join this you'll see we have a list of our values coming out. Oh man, Darwin's here. Whoops. <laughs> awesome. The fool of the whole crew is in. Uh, awesome. So how's, how are folks going? If, if you're just joining us for the first time and you just, just tuned in, we're getting into some max patching. We're taking a look at MC, and we're using MC not at, in the audio domain, but we're using it as a way to make cool, like, generative beats uh, in the kind of IDM range, but they also can make some pretty cool swing grooves and the likes. Okay, so let's see what this list looks like. This is where multi-slider is such a versatile object. It's not just a UI object, it could be a visualizing visualization object. So let's type new and type multi-slider. And it's just a straight up single slider right now if I lock my patch. 
So to lock, a quick shortcut to lock your patch, just like hit command and click anywhere blankly in the space. You can go down to the lock symbol here in the bottom left corner. Okay, so make, let's just hook this up to make list. Make, make list, um, sorry, let's hook this up to the multi slider. Make list is outputting a list and multi slider will just automatically adapt to this list. So there we have it. There's there we can see, and now now multi sliders default does have a range of minus one to one. So over here in the inspector that I can't zoom into, it's not a not a possibility to uh, to zoom in there. Let's set the range from zero to one, just so we can see it span over the full. The full display and we can even turn up so uh, select select the multi slider hit the inspector icon in the toolbar up here and there's a thickness attribute so if you click all you can see all the possibilities for this object which is a lot if you click all up here and there's a thickness you can turn that up so you can really see a nice visualization of what's going on. Now if you remember how harmonic works, uh, you'll see that these are ha harmonically set apart the phases and that the first one's going rather quick because that is basically uh, set at 0.33 and then they're set 0.33 apart right up to a top of 2. Okay, so let's tidy this up a little bit. We can get this out of the way. Uh, we can encapsulate pieces of max patching. This is kind of some good housekeeping. We can encapsulate pieces of max patch. Just select it like this and hold down sh Shift Option and E. Shift Option E. Oh, sorry, Shift Command E. This is muscle memory. I don't even remember what these shortcuts are. <laughs> P, uh, that's P for an encapsulation. And let's just call it like look. And that's nice and tidy now. We can get this away over here and get it right out of the way. Okay, so now we're back to this section here and we can see what's going on over here. You'll see if I change the value here, if I make it slower or faster. If you're patching along, have a little play with that. It's really cool. And you'll see basically what we've got going on here is a bunch of cool uh, polyrhythms. And so now we can split those out in interesting ways. We need to, let's get rid of these bangs and this is, let's keep the voice message. Let's get rid of the bangs. Now we need to kind of team up one of these bangs coming out of the MC Edge with the voice number. We don't need the voice part of this, we just need the number. So, but first up, uh, if I make a print object, you'll see that this is running so fast and so accurately and we're getting a trigger for the uh, zero, zero to a number and number to a zero in the MC Edge. You'll see we're getting multiples of triggers in the, in the print, in the console. So to make a print object down here, connect it if you want to see what's going on, and then go over here to this icon. This is our max console icon. Can't see the max window. What? All right. Let's not worry about it. So now we need to, to get all this, uh, our docs in a row. We're going to use the ZL objects here. There's an object called ZL.reg. And if I type it down here, ZL.reg uh, takes a list. And this here is a list coming out of the right outlet of MC Edge. And we want to join, just join that straight into our ZL.reg. ZL reg on the right inlet, you'll see that it's blue 
That means it's cold. So it's just the number's going in there, but it's not coming out. It needs a bang. And now we're going to bang it here out of this outlet. And then you'll see down here, we have the same thing. But we won't be getting our duplicates anymore. That gets rid of our duplicates. And now we just want to get the we just want to get the number and not, we we need to get rid of the voice. So type new or n for new object and we're going to type zero dot slice. And then what this does is it accepts a list and you can define where it is in the list that you want to slice it and part of the list goes out the left outlet and the other part of the list goes out the right. Now the zeal objects are incredibly useful. You'll, you'll find them whenever you look at anyone's patch there's a good chance you'll find a zeal object and I highly recommend just hitting, hitting the uh, alt or option on the object to get the help file. So let's just join that to our ZL reg just like this. So take a patch cord out of the left outlet of ZL reg into the left input of ZL slice. And if I make a message box, you'll see I've sliced it in the middle. So I've got the voice going there. I've got the number coming out the right outlet. Perfect. That's what we want. We don't care about the, the voice. Now we need to team this up with a bang because bang is what we're going to use to bang is what we're going to use to to control and trigger our sounds. So we're going to do this by just running the number into a pack object. And we're going to type i because we know that this is an integer number here. And then after I, so actually don't finish writing that pack object, after I type bang. So you want the bang to be teamed up with we want the number to be teamed up with a bang. Now we're going to use this number, you can think of this number as um, an index and this is going to be indexed out. Okay, so moving on we're going to use an object called route. So make a new object. Press N on the keyboard and type in route. And because we set how many channels are up here, we know that we have eight different bangs or eight different triggers. So type route one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can't see this on OBS, boo OBS. Uh, but when it, when you hover over the inlets and outlets, you should get a pop up that tells you like this output, the first output, outputs index one, or ma when it matches one, it will output a bang, and so on. One, two, three, four. So when this number and a bang arrive. If it's one and a bang, a bang will come out here. So let's join a patch cord into route. And then let's make some bangs. So just type in an unlock patcher, just type B on the keyboard to get a bang. And you can just either duplicate, Command D, Control D, or hold down Alt or Option to drag. And then make eight of them. Did I make eight? No, I made nine. Now here's a little trick. Uh, if you want everything to line up nice, and it already does, you can kind of set the first one in the right place. And let's just scramble these up. You can set the first one in the correct place, the last one in the correct place, and then hold down uh, Shift Alt Option or command shift alt or option for windows command and then h and they line up perfectly and then we just join a few patch cords 
like this. Okay, so now we have, let's change our uh, harmonic value back to 0.33 up here. Now we're getting bangs for each of these voices, each of our eight channels inside of our MC patch cable. Awesome. You'll see that they're running, so this first one is 0.33, and this last one is going to be 2 because our maximum value and the harmonic message here is 2 and our first increment is 0.33 all right so now it's time to get some sounds so we're going to send them around we're not going to draw and fan out a whole bunch of patch cables uh, so let's make a few sends so type in on the keyboard and uh, you can just type send or just S for short and then type the name of the send object so you can just type S and this is going to be a send and this sends it wirelessly or without a patch cable to an object and I just duplicated this and I'll just change the S to R for receive and now I'll get that kick bang from this first outlet. Let's move this up here, that's our kick. Let's call this one SNA for snare. Let's call this one, let's call it hat one. Call it hat two. Uh, let's just duplicate this, get a few more variations of those two, and let's rename this one here FM. Okay. So we've got a kick, a snare. Uh, hi hat one or hat one, another hat one, another hat two, an FM, and another FM. Uh, I'm going to just duplicate these because I don't want to write them out a million times. So just select them like this, and you can copy and paste, or you can alt and drag. And I'm just going to move them up here, and then you guessed it. I'm just going to go ahead and type. I'm going to edit these, change the S to an R. Alright. Let's get them all nice and neat. Okay, now the fun stuff. Uh, this is a bang. Bangs are great, but they kind of also, uh, you know, take take up resources. Uh, they're constantly drawing in Max, and you don't unless you need that visualization to observe. We have a lot of visualizers here right now that are all sucking up different uh, resources. You don't you don't constantly need them. So we have a bang down here. I'm going to get rid of this up here. Um, you might remember. Uh, the trigger object from the visualizer here that we made. So I'm going to use the trigger object and just type TB. No, I'm not going to do that. I mean, we don't need the bang for the audio. I'm going to type T1 because we're actually going to be using the one to fire off a sample in the playlist. Uh, playlist object is a just a quick and easy way to play back audio files. So now if I drag in a sample, and you can just grab a sample from anywhere. So you can grab a sample out of Max's sidebar. Here there's an object there's a icon called audio. And again, hmm, oh, looks like that showed up. Nope, there's a glitch. 
wants to show up. Uh, there's an icon in the left with a music note that says audio when you hover over it. And inside there is some built-in sounds in Max. So just go ahead and drag a sample and you can drag it in from anywhere. I'm going to drag one in over here. Got a kick. And if I connect this T1, this trigger one that's receiving a bang, and actually if I just show a little message box here, you'll see that it's just giving me a, a one constantly. You'll see here when I fire, connect the T1 to the input of the playlist, it's going to start firing off. Boom, 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 boom. Sick. All right. Now under this, because this might be a little loud and we should always mix our sounds and not just let them, you know, rip right out of max. Uh, let's, let's add a gain object underneath here. So just make a new object, type in on the keyboard and type gain tilde, just like this. All right. And then join a patch chord out of the kick drum playlist far left outlet into the gain object. Now I'm going to move this down a little bit. It's doing its job. doesn't need to do much more right now. Uh, we want to get our audio signal out of, we want to get our audio signal out of, uh, into our speakers, out of max. Uh, so, but, but I want to add a kind of safety mechanism here. Uh, there's an object that got added incrementally on an incremental update of Max 8. It's called Limi, L-I-M-I -I tilde. It's made by my friend and colleague Tim Place. It's a killer object. It's been around for forever. It was part of um, radio, I think. Um, Tim revived it and here it is and it's just called Limi Tilde. It's a look ahead limiter. It works really well and it's straightforward and simple. I'm going to make one attribute. So type Limi. If you need, if you need multiple channels, you need to type two or one or whatever. It's one by default. So I'm not typing anything. I'm just going to type at threshold and make it minus six. Okay, and now let's make an output, type in on the keyboard, and we're going to put DAC, Digital Audio Converter. This will get our audio out of Max. And we're just joining patch chord out of Limi into the left and the right outlet of the DAC. And now, should be able to hear my kick drum. There we go. It's pretty fast. Blast beats almost. Alright, let's kill that for a second. Move the Limi and the DAC down and let's get some of these others hooked up. Okay, so I'm going to drag in uh, a snare. Connect, uh, make a trigger one under the snare, T1. Make a new object. Connect it to the snare. You can see the snare popping off now. Connect a patch cable out of the snare into the gain. Now if I turn these up. So we'll do the same again. We'll keep moving along. It's good, good patching practice. Uh, just to save yourself the time, uh, providing the patches unlocked, select the T1, drag it along, hold down Alt or Option, and just once it's selected, drag across. And now we can just duplicate it across since we're going to need it for all of these. Actually, we won't need it for the FM. Okay. And now let's drag. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty weird, weird snare. 
Well, yeah, definitely more cowbell. <laughs> it needs more cowbell. Um, let's let's drag this other thing in, and I'm gonna turn these into different kinds of sounds. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. So we got the hat one. We want since we have two hat ones, we can drag both of these in like this. And let's select our gain, drag it across. All right. So. There we go. There's the, the hat one. Let's do some housekeeping here. This is always a, a really good practice to get into since we're kind of cramming ourselves in here. Let's kind of move this along. We can even get rid of our... Uh, we don't need two hat ones. This is actually... Um, we just... Since, since our hat ones and hat twos merge, we just need those for the sends. Does that make sense? Let me explain. So down here, these are all separate triggers. We have a separate hat two and a hat two trigger here, and a hat one and a hat one. But up here, since we're sending them to the same name, hat one, hat one, hat two, hat two, even though they're coming in at different times, they'll still merge together up here. That looks much neater, I like that. That's what I like. Neat patches. All right, let's chuck those FMs over there. We'll use them in a second. And then let's throw this hat too here. All right. You all having fun? Uh, just if you've just tuned in, we're digging into some MC patching over here. We've made a little way down to here that we take a phaser, phase locked to rate. Rate is then divided and multiplied. We then got the trigger section here. We're then routing, we're giving that an index. We're routing that out up to our audio up here. Okay, so got some sounds. Now this is all a little bit crazy and not as kind of like idiosyncrat idiosynchronous or like um, asynchronous or the likes. So let's just, that kick is really driving me nuts. So let's, let's calm it down a little bit. Down here, we want to use this kick, but we want to divide it up a little bit. Now a great way to divide a bang is to go ahead here, make a new object, and we're going to type counter, and we're going to just hold the object, select the object, and hold down shift, and you can just slip it onto the patch cable, and it joins up, so you're not having to rejoin the patch cables all the time. You can even get rid of it that way. You can even hold, select it, hold down shift, and hit delete to get rid of it. That's a cool little uh, patchy mechanics thing in Max that's once you make it muscle memory, you'll, you'll save a lot of time. Uh, so right now, as you can guess, our bang is just driving this counter and it's just gonna count to infinity, right? So we wanna use an object here. It's basically like a divisor. Uh, it, it, you set it a number and it gives you the difference. After, it gives you the number or the difference after the division. So that divisor object is actually a percentage sign. And we're going to divide our incoming bang by three. And again, let's just slip that in onto the patch cord. We'll just hold down shift 
and now and now if I put a message box down here and connect out of the percentage three or the divisor three object you can see it's counting from zero to two yeah it, it's we call it divisor in max and modulo modulo is what it is yes um, all right, and now we can go ahead and put another object here, and it's called select, and we have an abbreviation for it. You just cell SEL zero and slip that in here. And now we'll be getting a bang again, but we'll, we'll only get one bang every, every three that are coming in. And if I turn on the kick, you'll hear that it's, it's calmed down a little bit. Let's make it just a little more interesting again, since that's still a little consistent. Let's just uh, let's split this up and how are we gonna do this? Let's make. Um, Let's split up this. So we know it's coming out of here. What we can do? What can we do? Oh, you know what? Ah, let's leave it like that for the moment. That, I like that level of control. You can also put an integer here, so you can just type in on the keyboard and actually let's do this instead of just the select hitting every three times let's put in a sneaky object here random three okay so now that's now it's banging every third time the kick is every every time the kick is triggering up here we're getting a bang out of the select object every third bang now let's add some random now we're going to get a random number between zero and two now let's put in the split object and what split does is it splits up a number between a certain range so let's put zero one so what split is going to do is any number that hits 0 or 1 is going to go out the left outlet and any number that goes above 1 is going to go out the right. So let's go ahead and put that in here, just connect it up manually. And then let's delete this patch code between split and the kick and let's put two bangs here so we can visualize this so each time we get either a zero or one we'll get a bang on this object and every time we hit two we'll get a bang on this object it's kind of a loosey-goosey way of um, adding in a percentage or a weighted randomness and let's put the kick on the here. So essentially this left one is 66% and this right one's 33. You can certainly get more accurate by having larger random numbers and going into floating point and the likes, but I think this is a pretty fun way. Yeah, that's a good it's a good one. So now it'll be now our kick will have a kind of weighted that's getting a little more interesting all right now playlist has all sorts of options and we just want to add a speed control up here so type M for a new message box and type speed dollar sign one connect it up and then let's add a, add a floating point number, so type F on the keyboard, join that into the first inlet of 
the speed and now we can kind of tune our kick a little more and then let's duplicate that across here we can kind of play around with this Let's set this phaser, we can turn this up a little faster at 2.53, that's like somewhere around 160. And we can even make this be like 0.25, change our harmonic amount. You can set start and end points for these. You can set start and end points of playlist. We've got one more little, let's add a quick and dirty FM patch in here. We just need one of these FM bangs. I'm going to turn this down for a second. Okay. So let's add a FM, getting an FM hit over here. You can see the FM coming in here. And now for convenience sake, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, use an abstraction that's been in Max, or well, I think it's been in Max since MSP came out, somewhere in the late 90s. It's been there a long time because it's in some pretty old patches. If you type in on the keyboard and type simple, you'll see this object, and it's not an object, it looks like an object, but it's an abstraction. It's called Simple FM Tilda and it's in a lot of patches over the years. Now if I lock the patch and double click, oh yeah, you're not gonna see anything because of OBS. Um, anyway, pull up Simple FM, double click on it, and you can see the guts of it. It's actually another little piece of max patching. Um, and inside of there, there's three inputs. Carrier frequency, harmonicity, ratio, and modulation index. So we want to set these and we want to get some sounds out of here. So the first one is just going to be straight up frequency and I'm going to manually set that with a floating point number. So type F on the keyboard, connect that to the first inlet of FM. All right, let's span it out a little further. And then this is going to be our harmonicity or our ratio. Let's randomize that. So let's make a let's make a TB trigger bang up here. Get rid of that bang. Let's make a TB under the RFM. The RFM is coming from down here. I just selected the bang object. All right, now let's make a new object and just make it like random 25. And we want our index or our harmonicity to be somewhat low. We're just gonna make it between zero and one. We're just gonna go ahead and divide that by, so make another object under random 25 and then we're going to do uh, forward slash 25 and then make a dot here so that you have so that you have a floating point number and that's going to give us a random value between 0 and 1 now we want to keep it somewhat nice although you know there's some pretty awesome stuff in the not nice areas, but for day for, for today, let's keep it nice. Uh, there's an object called round, and that's going to round to the nearest uh, value that we set, the nearest multiple. So let's type a new object and type uh, 0.25. 
So now we'll get a random value between 0 and 1. So it'll be 0, 0.255 or 1. So you get five, five random values. Cool. Now we want to uh, mess, mess around with the modulation index because that's where some pretty fun stuff comes. And let's offset it from our random value here. So we're going to make a new object. And it's actually press N on the keyboard, exclamation mark. And it's called inlets reversed. And what this does is like a subtraction object. Yeah, so it's it's an exclamation mark and then the minus symbol and then we can type 25 and now we join this random output of this object random 25 into the inlets reversed and now have a look at this if I make two message boxes you'll see it gives me the random value here and over here on the bottom message box I get the difference. So it'll be the opposite of what's going on over here. Uh, let's smooth it out a little bit. So that's going to be going around all over the place. We can type uh, in for a new object. Actually let's multiply it. Let's multiply it by 5 So now we'll be getting uh, up to 125 coming out of here. We want it to be a floating point number because we want to make a line object over here so that it just kind of ramps and morphs between a little bit. It will glitch a bit, but actually because we won't always be moving from the last value within line, but actually that's where some pretty fun stuff can, can happen. Um, so I'm going to join that up here. Um, and actually let's go ahead and switch this up because this, this simple FM really works well with, uh, you know, changes that happen in the audio rate. So rather than using event based patch chords, Let's make a SIG object, SIG, not an MC SIG, just a straight up SIG, SIG tilde, and hold down shift and drag it in here, and then we'll duplicate it, it whoop, select it, hold down option or alt, drag it across, all right. So now our FM synth is going to town, uh, let's make a gain object here, so make a gain object, let me zoom out a little, do we want to span and patch code across there, yes, okay so join the outlet of simple FM to the inlet of the gain here. and then drag a patch cord out of the left outlet of gain into Limi over here. You can sort this patch cord. It's always good to segment patch cords, I think, when you're going back up. So you can select that patch cord, Command Y, and just tidy it up a little bit. That's nice and neat. All right. Now let's set our frequency, let's set it like 400 or something. Alright, that's pretty fun. But it's just going all the time, it's not, it's not rhythmic. It's just, it, uh, so let's go ahead over here, let's give it an envelope. So new, and we want to hit uh, shift star for multiply, and then a tilde. And that's all we need to do. This is going to be essentially our VCA. And just drag it in there. So again, to get 
To put a new object on a patch cable, just select the object, hold down shift, drag it over the patch cable, and then let go of your mouse. And now it's in there. Uh, it might feel a little weird at first, but it just, it, once it becomes muscle memory, you'll wonder how you lived without it. Um, okay, so let's make a, a function. This is a great way, easy way to make an envelope. We'll make a new object and type function. And it's a basically a breakpoint function editor. Uh, we can draw an envelope in here. It accepts a bang and it will output all the points in line format to a line object. So underneath here, we'll make a line object. It will work with a max line object, so you can do it with at, an, at event rate, but we're gonna do it at audio rate, so let's make a line tilde object. And now it needs to come out of the second outlet of function into the first inlet of line Uh, last object created was either the um, multiply object here or the function object. That might be what you're after, Becca. Function object. So in on the keyboard, underneath there, make a new object, line, tilde. Join the second outlet of function to the first inlet of line. And then join that to the right inlet of our multiply here. And then, because we're getting a bang up here, so lock the patch. We can draw an envelope in here once we lock the patch. We can also make a message box up here to clear that envelope. And then, we need to bang that. Uh, it needs a bang in the left inlet, and that allows us to get our point, our function, our all, po all points in line format out. It's basically a list uh, to the line object. So I'm gonna take an out, uh, a patch cord from the TB object up here. Let me zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna drag a patch cord and connect it into the left inlet of function. Okay, now if I turn this up, you'll hear that. Cool. This FM sounds a little better uh, with a bit of reverb. I have an abstraction here of my own and I'll include this in a link in the channel after the stream. Uh, so I just typed, you don't have this, I'm gonna put this in here just for the sake of the sound. And uh, it's actually an abstraction. We'll just add a touch of, oh. Max is really slowing down for some reason. Doesn't like live streaming. Uh, all right, now we have some reverb on that. So that pretty much concludes what we're uh, gonna get up to today. 
Um, a few areas that I would encourage you to explore. There's an attribute here. If you click on the, you know, just slightly left to the, this, this kick object or the kick playlist up here. And it, you'll get a little arrow that comes up. I believe that you can see the arrow, but you can't see, see what the arrow makes. Um, under there is an attribute section and time stretching is available. So there, you'll see time stretching popped up. Time stretching is super fun. You can turn on time stretching and really kind of mess around with these sounds more. Really encourage you to kind of like, uh, check out time stretching time stretching is also available in groove it's also available in sf play uh it's yeah it's it's awesome and a great way to get interesting sounds another way that you can expand on this patch um this route object you can dynamically set the selector points so right now this they're set to one two three four, five, six, seven, eight. You can make a live number box. So that's just in on the keyboard and a live number box. And you could change these dynamically. So you could make it that the, the third one fires off when it receives an index from the seventh one. Or, and you could set these all along here for each of the inlets to, you know, dynamically change the selector points and you could modulate as well. It's a really fun way. Yeah, MC Comb is awesome. Definitely want to check that out. Actually, if you just chain a few different MC Combs together, you'll get a pretty interesting reverb. Um, yeah, and, and every MSP object, as Andrew's saying, has, has an equivalent MC object. Uh, there's some great MC resources on the Cycling74 website. There's a talk that I did with David Zuccarelli at the 2018 loop. Um, that shows some pretty cool sound design possibilities with MC. Um, also, other, other cool resources. I think Darwin did a, uh, a small YouTube series on using MC when it was first released with Max 8. Um, and yeah, again, the advantage of doing kind of like generative beat stuff this way uh, in the audio domain is definitely accuracy. Um, I should add, if you come back later on to this stream, maybe in a couple of hours, I'll have a link where you can download the finished version of this patcher. In case you wasn't, you weren't able to follow along, you'll be able to get this patch in, in another hour or two. It'll be available. Uh, this has been really fun. Uh, so what's, if you have any questions, I'm happy to hang around for a couple of minutes. Uh, shoot away, I can keep an eye on the comments right now. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is this has been a blast. Maybe we can uh, maybe next month we can take this further. Yeah, we could actually, uh, I mean, I feel like a cool way to extend this one later on would be to make our own uh, polyphony MC voice, probably FM. Uh, it does some pretty f fun stuff. Yeah, MC has a whole, uh, MC has a voice allocator and a note allocator object. It's just MC voice and note. And it does that whole indexing thing uh, from the, the right outlet. If you keep an eye on my uh, social media this week, I'll post up a few kind of interesting ways that you can really, really, really extend this patch simply using more MC objects. Uh, just really fun little things, but an object, perhaps some, a little bit of homework to look at. Uh, check out the MC dot MC dot target object 
You can utilize this object a lot. Yeah, we can do a gen. We can do a gen video in the future. Uh, I think I'm 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 calling this video a success. So uh, thanks for thanks for hanging with me. I want to just a shout out to Andrew Pask and Darwin Gross for for hanging out. I uh, really appreciate it, guys. Um, awesome. All right, fellas, I'm gonna take off. It's been a pleasure. Uh, keep keep an eye out on social media this week. I'll post up some ways and different things you can do to adapt this this patch and take it further. Stay stay well, stay safe. Adios.